Special thanks to Stumbling Tours super sponsors Schumann 3D Blast, Shine Wolf, Ministry of Ennui Control, Metric Conversion, Thingy, Lemon314 and Lord Entropy. Visit David X Newton on Patreon to join the ASCII Brigade. I think it's fair to say that I've sorted town growth out now, so let's move on to something else that's always bothered me. In the DOS Game Club podcast episode about Transport Tycoon Deluxe, I said that one of the biggest clues that Chris Sawyer is a British developer is how often he tuned public transport to break down. It seems that every few moments of gameplay, you'll jump at the sudden deafening sound of one of your vehicles tearing itself free from its axles. It will then stop dead with black smoke billowing out the back, wasting time for a while and blocking anything behind it. The frequency of breakdowns in the game is tunable to some degree in the game settings, where you can set it to three levels, none, far too often, and comical. Going by the content of forum threads in years past, vehicle breakdowns have been the subject of frustration since the original game was released in 1994, with many players hating them, but some of them enjoying the element of randomness that it forces them to deal with. I went into the code to find out why they happen, and hopefully how to avoid them. Vehicle reliability can be a confusing thing to talk about, because the OpenTDD code has two slightly different things that it refers to with the same word. Each vehicle in your fleet has its own individual reliability score, which will go up and down according to its age and when it's serviced. But that individual score is also influenced by a second reliability score, which is tied to the type of vehicle it happens to be. The reliability score that's tied to vehicle type is the one shown as max reliability on the vehicle purchase window, and you can find a vehicle's individual current reliability in its details window. The code semi-consistently refers to the makes and models of vehicles that are available to build in the game as engines, and the actual buses, trains and so on that currently exist in the game world as vehicles, so I'm going to try to stay with that terminology as much as I can. Both engine and vehicle reliability scores are expressed as percentages in the interface, which is rather misleading. The higher this score is, the better, but the values don't actually represent a percentage in any meaningful way. Internally, they're represented as two-byte numbers from 0 to 65535, and the real score is translated into a value from 0 to 100 for the interface. For the rest of the video, I've turned that conversion off, and the values shown in the windows will be the actual internal reliability scores. The mechanics of vehicle breakdowns are spread across several different values tied to a vehicle. As well as the vehicle's reliability score and its corresponding engine reliability score, there's the vehicle breakdown chance, breakdown counter, breakdown delay and the reliability decrement speed. These last four are normally hidden, but for this video I have added all of them to the Vehicle Details window to make it easier to see what's going on. When a new vehicle is built, it will inherit its starting reliability score from the maximum reliability of its engine, as shown on the new vehicle list. It will also receive a hidden value from the engine definition called the Decay Speed. The game multiplies the Decay Speed by 4 and stores it on the vehicle as the Reliability Decrement Speed. This hidden value isn't a great mystery, because for land and air vehicles it is invariably 20, therefore putting the reliability decrement at 80. The exception is for boats, which all have a decay speed of 5, apart from the Bakewell 300 hovercraft, which has it at 10. Therefore, the reliability of boats decreases at a slower rate compared to other vehicles, and of course, custom vehicles defined in new GRF can set this to whatever they like. At the start of each day, therefore every 74 ticks or 2.2 seconds of real time, all vehicles will call the check vehicle breakdown function in vehicle.cpp. This will take the vehicle's current reliability score and subtract the reliability decrement speed from it down to a minimum of zero. The code then checks for any conditions which would exempt this vehicle from breaking down. These are if the game's breakdown setting is none, if the vehicle is stopped, if the breakdown counter is above zero, which will come to later but which indicates that the vehicle is already about to break down, if the vehicle is travelling at a speed value of less than five, whose actual meaning varies between vehicles but it's very slow, or if the vehicle exists as part of the game playing out in the background of the opening menu. If any of these are true, then it will stop checking here and go on to the next vehicle. If the vehicle isn't exempt from a potential breakdown, the code now increases the chance that the vehicle will enter the breakdown state. The breakdown chance is incremented by 1, then for unlucky vehicles there's a 1 in 25 chance that a further 25 points will be added to it. 
The breakdown chance is then reduced to 255 if it's gone over, but if it's gone that high then this honestly isn't going to help it much. The game now needs to take the breakdown chance and decide whether it's high enough to cause the vehicle to break down. To do this it consults a table which is confusingly also called breakdown chance, but I'm going to call it the breakdown limit table. This is hard coded with 64 entries in vehicle.cpp, starting at 3 and then gradually rising to 250 on an exponential like curve. This table's values represent the number that the vehicle's breakdown chance value needs to be below to avoid a breakdown on this cycle. Again, unfortunately for something called breakdown chance, a small value like 3 is more difficult not to exceed and means that a breakdown is very likely to happen. The number that gets picked from the breakdown limit table, as I'm going to call it from now on, depends on a calculation based on the vehicle's current reliability score. First, the game makes sure to give more preferential treatment to boats here, as they get a rather arbitrary sounding bonus of 26,214 points added to their reliability score. If the breakdown's game setting is reduced, then all vehicles, including the boats which just got a bonus, will then get this same number added. The number that comes out after the bonuses is then capped at 65535 and divided by 1024 rounded down. This will produce a number from 0 to 63, and this is the index that will be used to decide the number to use from the breakdown limit table. The more days that pass, the lower the vehicle's reliability score will get, so the index to select from the breakdown limit table will decrease over time. This will produce lower and lower numbers that the breakdown chance needs to come in below, and all while the breakdown chance is itself rising steadily. Eventually, the breakdown chance will exceed the selected breakdown limit, and the vehicle will break down. There's quite a lot going on there, so I'll walk through an example. This bus, who is called Morse, recently rolled out of the depot for the first time and is ferrying passengers around Innsdorf to bump up the town's growth rate a bit. On each end of day that the bus is in motion, it has gone through the check vehicle breakdown function, counting its breakdown chance up and its reliability down. Like almost every other vehicle in the game, it has a reliability decrement speed of 20 times 4 which is popularly known as 80, so this is the value by which the number is ticking down now. If we pause the video here, we can use what we know about the code to predict what's going to happen next. When the next day rolls over, the decrement value of 80 is going to be subtracted from Morse's reliability rating, putting it down to 55969. Its breakdown chance is probably going to increment by just 1 to 129, but there is a 1 in 25 chance that it will leap up another 25 points to 154. Now we need to work out the index of the entry in the breakdown limit table that this number will be compared against. This will be calculated from the new reliability rating of 55969. The bus is not currently a boat, and breakdowns in this particular game are set to what I will begrudgingly call normal, so no bonuses to this number are awarded. The code now divides it by 1024 rounding down, and this gives us the number 54. We now have to compare entry 54 of the breakdown limit table to our breakdown chance. If the breakdown chance equals or exceeds our chosen number, then the bus will break down. Entry 54 happens to be 130, and the most likely breakdown chance we'll get is 129, so we're just at the edge of the safe range. If the bus gets the random 25 point penalty, then the number will exceed the breakdown limit number, and it will break down. Fortunately, on this occasion it's lucky, and it continues as you would expect. This luck doesn't last long, however, because just 2.2 seconds later, we have to check for breakdowns again. This time the reliability will drop another 80 points to 55889, and the breakdown chance will advance to at least 130. The new reliability rating hasn't changed enough to alter the index we look up in the breakdown limit table, it works out to 54 again, which is still 130, but this time our breakdown chance will unavoidably at least equal that breakdown limit. This will put us on the path to a breakdown. Interestingly, the vehicle doesn't actually break down immediately when a breakdown is triggered. All that happens at this point is the breakdown chance being set back to zero and two new values being set up. The breakdown counter, which will be set to a random number between 63 and 126, and the breakdown delay, which will similarly be set between 128 and 255. The check vehicle breakdown function will now skip over this vehicle as long as the breakdown counter remains above zero, so it won't interfere further until the vehicle is fixed. 
Control of the breakdown now passes over to the vehicle's handle breakdown function, which despite sounding like it's only used if the vehicle is already broken down, is actually called on every tick for every vehicle. What this function does is dependent on the value of the breakdown counter. If it's zero, then it will immediately exit and do nothing. If it's above two, then it will decrement the counter by one, unless the vehicle is currently loading at a station. You can see the countdown pausing as the bus goes through its stop here. When the breakdown counter reaches the number two on its countdown, the real breakdown begins, producing the familiar crashing noise and black smoke. While a vehicle is broken down, it will have a red status banner on its vehicle window, will be frozen to the spot, and can't accept any commands that involve movement, like going to a depot or turning around. In this state, every two ticks the breakdown delay will decrease by one, except if it's a train, where every four ticks it'll reduce by two, for reasons I don't fully comprehend. Either way, the result is the same. After double the number of ticks as the breakdown delay, the vehicle will be repaired and continue on its way. As the breakdown delay can be randomly set between 128 and 255, this gives breakdowns a range of 256 to 510 ticks, meaning about 3.5 to 7 game days. When the breakdown delay reaches zero, all the other breakdown related counters have also been set back to zero ready to start the cycle again, with the exception of the reliability score which will continue to tick down from where it was. This will make subsequent breakdowns likely to happen even sooner next time around, as the number chosen from the breakdown limit table slowly continues to reduce. As usual, not absolutely every kind of transport works in the same way with regard to breakdowns, and this time the exception is aircraft. An aeroplane or helicopter will still use the same variables as the other vehicles and call check vehicle breakdown to simulate the breakdown cycle, but fortunately it won't stop dead in mid-air when a breakdown is due. Instead, when the breakdown counter finishes, they'll have a much more minor engine fire that causes them to start spewing out a trail of black smoke. In this state, the aircraft's maximum speed is reduced to 320 km per hour, no matter how fast it's normally capable of going. Unlike other vehicles who use the breakdown delay counter to decide the length of a breakdown, aeroplanes will continue to be in the broken down state until they next make a landing. You can see the delay counter is set to a random value when the vehicle's broken down, but it's never looked at or decreased because aircraft don't use the handle breakdown function in the same way as other vehicle types. Instead, rather oddly, the breakdown state is cleared by the function that spawns the black smoke coming out of the aircraft when it next gets the opportunity to get its speed below 10 km per hour, and this speed can only be achieved when the aircraft is on the ground. An inconvenience like a smoking engine won't cause an aircraft to redirect and land elsewhere, or take any other measures that you might think of as advisable. Despite its slow speed, it will be happy to continue to its destination, where unless it's due for servicing anyway, it will make the highly questionable decision to load up another plane full of cargo and be on its way. It is possible for aircraft to crash, but this never has anything to do with the plane's reliability or its breakdown state. Now that we know how the variables work together, here's a graph of the breakdown chance and breakdown limit value that we can expect for a non-boat over 800 days. This assumes the reliability score decreases by 80 points per day, that the average daily breakdown chance will rise by 1 and 1 25th to account for the occasional 25 point penalty, and that the vehicle has 100% reliability, therefore starting the breakdown limit at 250. As you can see, having 100% reliability doesn't mean that a vehicle won't break down as you would reasonably expect. Instead, the percentage is really a measure of the time between expected breakdowns. The steadily decreasing vehicle reliability will drag the vehicle breakdown limit down over time and inevitably run into the rising breakdown chance. Then the breakdown chance will reset to zero and rise again until it touches the decreasing breakdown limit again. A vehicle that starts with perfect reliability on the normal breakdown setting can be expected to last about 120 days on average until its first breakdown, but after that the average gap reduces all the way to 80 days and it only gets worse from there. The way to intervene in this cycle is to have the vehicle serviced, and this happens whenever a vehicle leaves or enters a depot or hangar. The player can do this manually, but by default vehicles will be set to automatically take a break from their orders occasionally and go to the nearest depot for servicing. By default, a vehicle will try to find a place to be serviced every 150 days, and this setting can be adjusted to happen at different time intervals or when a vehicle's reliability drops below a certain level. 
The function that performs servicing is called Vehicle Service in Depot, and is thankfully pretty straightforward compared to the rest of the mechanics so far. You can see that when Morse is inspected, the vehicle's date of last service becomes the current date, its breakdown since last service will be reduced to zero, and its reliability will be restored to whatever its corresponding engine reliability is. In addition, because we're on normal breakdowns here, the current breakdown chance will be divided by four, but if we were playing on reduced it would be reset all the way back to zero. Adding regular servicing to the equation changes our graph over time to look like this. At each service, the lines will snap further away from each other without touching, therefore avoiding a breakdown. This assumes, rather optimistically, that the vehicle can immediately find a depot every 150 days, so it's serviced right when it needs to be. And even then, you can see the lines meeting and causing a breakdown just before the service is due to take place. It's only once you set the servicing interval down to 100 days that the lines stop getting the chance to touch. Even then, this is only an average case. It's very possible that the random 25 point penalty will come up more often than this assumes, which will make the vehicle break down anyway. Even more glaringly, this graph still assumes that engine reliability is at 100%, which is only very rarely the case. The famous Microprose Regal bus that you start off with in the temperate climate can start off much lower, and I often see it in the high 70s, meaning a real value of just above 50,000. With this reliability, the breakdown limit starts off much lower, and you wouldn't be able to avoid breakdowns without servicing the vehicle with absurd regularity. All of this brings me to something I've skirted around until now, which is exactly how the engine reliability is determined. You'd be forgiven for thinking that this would just be a fixed property of each available vehicle model, but Chris Sawyer really went above and beyond with it, simulating a complete engine life cycle with the maximum reliability of each engine rising and falling over time. And it doesn't matter when in the cycle you buy a vehicle, as the maximum reliability of the engine changes, your vehicles of that engine type will be set to that maximum reliability when they're serviced, so they will both enjoy the increases and suffer the reductions in maximum reliability of the engine over time. The decay speed that was used in the calculation for the reliability decrement comes from the engine info definitions, which are in engines.h. Along with the decay speed, they also contain an introduction date, a life length, and a base life. Of the two life variables, base life is the one that we are interested in. Life length describes the amount of time that a vehicle of this engine type can last before starting to complain that it's getting old, and base life influences the lifespan of the engine itself. Engine reliability has quite a lot of random elements to it, so it can be wildly different from game to game. When a new landscape is generated, the game calls startup engines in engine.cpp. This repeatedly calls the function startup one engine for every engine defined in the base game and any active new GRF extensions. This will set up a collection of properties on each engine type. They define the reliability an engine will have when it's introduced, the highest reliability it will be possible for it to have in its life cycle, the reliability it will end up at before being removed from the list of available engines, and three durations in months called phases one, two, and three. Especially when you convert the reliability values back to percentages, you can see there's a lot of random variability in all of these, and out of all of them, only the phase two duration can be influenced by the engine definition at all. The others can be huge gambles no matter how modern an engine is. It's very possible to just be unfortunate and have a game where the best available engine never rises above a 75% reliability, meaning it has a best case breakdown limit of just 68 days. Having set up these values that determine how the engine life cycle will play out, the function calc engine reliability will be called now and every time the game month rolls over throughout the game to adjust the engine's reliability with respect to its age in months. The three phase approach is meant to simulate newly manufactured vehicles being slightly to hideously flawed to begin with, eventually reaching a peak when the bugs are worked out, and then slowly decaying as technology moves on and the older engines fade into obsolescence. During whatever duration phase one has decided to be, an engine will rise in a linear fashion from its starting reliability to its maximum reliability, stepping up by an equal value month by month. Throughout phase two, it will stay at its maximum reliability, and during phase three, it will decline again linearly towards its final reliability. Once all three phases have elapsed, the engine will then be retired from the list of available vehicles, and no further changes to its reliability will be made. 
The curve of rising and falling maximum reliability includes the year-long period where one company might have accepted an offer to test the engine exclusively. For that reason, the previewing company is likely to be saddled with vehicles with very low reliability until the engine maximum reliability crawls up to an acceptable level. Companies that get it later won't see the period when it's in the very low stage. It's also possible for an engine to be set up to retire from the list earlier than its randomly chosen total lifespan. The engine's retire early property is the number of years to retire it in advance of its natural retirement date after the three phases. But no standard engines use this feature, and it's exclusively a new GRF thing. To prevent the game reaching a point where all vehicles become useless due to their age, no further aging of any vehicle will take place after halfway through the last available engine's lifespan. So having gone through all of this in what I thought would be one of the shorter subjects to talk about, now I know a bit more about breakdowns and why they happen. Unfortunately, most of it is outside player control, as a lot of their frequency depends on the generosity of the vehicle lifespan curves that happen to be generated when you start a new game. Putting everything we now know together, the graph of breakdowns over time looks something like this. The maximum reliability of an engine changes over time, here it's declining gradually, and so the reliability that a vehicle can be boosted to by being serviced also changes. As that vehicle reliability ticks down, the vehicle's breakdown limit also decreases, influencing the number of days that a vehicle can be expected to run without breaking down. You can reduce the frequency of breakdowns by trying to avoid new vehicle models or those with low maximum reliability, and it helps to service your vehicles a bit more regularly than the default 150 days, but the mechanics are designed so that they can never completely be avoided reliably. There's always that surprisingly significant 1 in 25 chance that a vehicle will just be unlucky and get a large penalty to its breakdown chance. Speaking personally, making this video hasn't moved me from the camp that prefers to just turn breakdowns off entirely, because they have too much of a chance of happening when in real life circumstances they shouldn't. A newly bought vehicle, even if it's an early model from the manufacturer, should under no circumstances wobble out of the shed and immediately fall to bits, no matter how many Tesla drivers try to convince us that's normal. I think they might be more palatable if there were another breakdown setting that had different conditions for advancing the breakdown counter, or reducing the reliability. It could pay more attention to the engine life cycle, using the reliability more like the percentage it's presented as, and break down only when a vehicle had carried a certain total amount of weight or was nearing the end of its lifetime, incentivizing players to refresh their vehicles. Maybe I'll write it myself. Thank you to everyone on the left here for supporting me creating Stumbling Tours videos. If you'd like to join in or make suggestions for other games to cover, please have a look at David X. Newton on Patreon.